It's been well over a year that the startup.cs class has gone missing, but I still get asked about it. So let's find where exactly it went and what happened to it. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. The startup.cs class was responsible for setting up the application's request pipeline and configuring services by setting up the dependency injection pipeline. However, that was back in .NET 3.1 and .NET 5. Since .NET 6 came out, which has been well over an year, the startup.cs class is no longer part of the default template. This change came along with the new .NET 6 hosting model that requires only one file, which is the program.cs. The minimal hosting model significantly reduces the number of files and the lines of code required to create an app. It unifies the startup.cs and program.cs into a single file, which is the program.cs file. It also uses top level statements to minimize code and uses global using directives to eliminate and minimize the number of using statements. If you're new to .NET and been learning by watching videos which were made in .NET 3.1, it can be confusing when you start trying out the code samples on your own by using the .NET 6 model because of the missing startup.cs class. It could also confuse if you're trying to migrate your .NET 3.1 apps to the .NET 6 or even .NET 7 because you don't know where the startup.cs class and where to put those code in the new model. So let's have a look between these two different versions and see what exactly has changed. Here I have my IDE open. I'm using Rider, but this is also the same if you're using Visual Studio. I have two application projects created. One is the startup 6 project, which is a default ASP.NET API template using .NET 6. Let me switch to the other application where I have the startup 3 application which is the same ASP.NET template, but using the .NET 3.1. Now this is also going to be the same if you were on .NET 5. Now between these two applications, as you can clearly see, the one file that's missing is the startup.cs. So if I'm tabbing across, you can see the startup.cs is missing in startup 6. Now coming back to the .NET 3.1 solution, if I navigate into the startup.cs, you can see this sets up the configure services and the configure method. The configure services was setting up the dependency injection and the configure was setting up the app request pipeline. Now, if you would like to learn more about the startup.cs class, you can check out my video linked here and in the descriptions below. Now coming back to our solution in .NET 6, let's go to the program.cs and see what has changed in here. Now you can see here, we are setting up the builder.services and setting up the controllers and endpoints and also swagger generation. Now once the builder is built, it uses the app to set up the pipeline. So all that's happened is every code inside the startup.cs class from your 3.1 has been moved into the program.cs class. It also uses different properties to set up these service collection and also the app builder. Now, as your application grows in size in the .NET 6 model, the program.cs class can become quite large. Now you would have lots of dependency injection being set up inside your program.cs and also the setups required to modify your request pipeline. At some point, you might want to start grouping the things inside your program.cs class when using .NET 6. So let's start by doing that and see how it's almost similar to the .NET 3.1 model. So let's first collapse this and let's refactor this builder.services which is being used in three of these places into a property. So let me use control dot and say introduce variable. Now Rider allows this to replace all the three occurrences and create a variable out of that. So let me use that and specify this as var services. So now I have a services property, which I'm using to set up all the other dependency injection for this particular program. Now, if you're completely new to dependency injection, I highly recommend checking out my video, which is unfortunately in .NET 3.1, but is very similar in .NET 6 as well. It will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Now that we have refactored this into a property, let's refactor these three methods into its own method. 
So let me use control dot and specify extract method. So let's leave it at the end of the top level statements and let's call this as configure services method. And let's click next. So Rider refactors this code for us and creates a configure services method, passing in the I service collection and it sets up all the existing dependency injection on that object. Now, similarly, we can do the same with the app.environment and the HTTP request pipeline builder. So let's extract the app.environment into a different property. So let's do control dot introduce variable and let's specify this as web host environment, which is the app.environment. Now we also have the app, which is getting passed in here, which is created from the builder as you can see above. So now if I select all these methods and then do control dot and say extract method again, let's again keep it at the end of the top level statements and then simply call this as the configure method. Now you can see we have a new configure and a configure services method inside our program.cs. Now the configure services takes in a I service collection and the configure method takes in a I web host environment and also the web application as its parameters. So let's slightly reorder this. So let's put this as the second parameter and let's make this as the first and let's pass in accordingly. So let's pass the app first and also let's pass in the web host environment. Now, if I switch back to the .NET 3.1 model where the startup.cs existed, you can see it has a configure services method which takes in an I service collection, just like our method today that we created. Now, if we scroll down, you can see the configure method takes in an I application builder and a web host environment as its parameters, which is very similar to the method that we extracted out. This takes in a web application and the Y web host environment. Now, if you go to the definition of web application, you can see this implements the I application builder, which is what we were passing in. However, we use certain methods, which is on the web application because of which I will leave it as web application. Now, as your application grows, you can group all your dependency injection inside the configure services and keep the HTTP request pipeline related logic inside your configure method. Now, if you think the program.cs is still growing a lot larger, you can extract these into a different class as well. So let's copy both of this method that we just created. Let's remove this from here and let's create a new class inside our solution. So let's go to the root and create a new class. Now to keep this interesting, let's name this class as startup.cs. And let's move those new methods inside here. So we have the configure.services and the configure method inside our startup.cs. Now let's come back and let's create a new startup.cs instance. So let's call this as startup is equal to new startup that we have just created. Now we have the startup instance on which we can call the configure services. So let's call the startup.configure services and let's also call the startup.configure method. Now, if I come back to the startup.cs, you can see this is not public. So let me pick this as public and let me also make this method as public so that we can call it from program.cs. Let's fix the naming here. So it has a missing T. So let me fix that. And let's also fix the calling variables. Now we have the startup.cs class, which extracts out the configure services and the configure method. Now, if we switch back to the .NET 3.1 version, you can see the startup.cs looks exactly the same. Now, the only difference is this takes in an I configuration. Now, this is required if your dependency injection or your pipeline needs to depend on application configuration. Now, if you're new to setting up app settings.json and configuration, I have a video which is linked here, which will explain all the concepts to you. But for now, to get the startup.cs also have the Kai configuration inside our .NET 6 class. So let's inject that when we create the new instance. So we can pass in the builder.configuration object, which is the configuration manager. So let's pass that. Now, if I go to F12 of that, you can see this is the configuration manager and this implements the I configuration route. So we can pass in the I configuration route to our startup class. So let's come back to our startup 
and let's create a new constructor and let's call this as i configuration root and let's say configuration root and inject this as a read only parameter now if any of these methods requires to access the app settings dot variable it can use the configuration root so let's add in an example so let's go into the app settings dot json let's create a new property so let's call this as my test property and let's pass in as my test value now if i come back to the startup i can get the value here so let's say my test value is equal to the configuration root dot let's use the get value method and let's specify it as a string and also specify the property name which in this case is my test so let's put a breakpoint here and let's run this application to see if this is working as expected so if i also come back to program.cs let's create a new breakpoint here and press f5 now when the application starts up it creates a new startup class so let's create that and it calls the startup.configure services so once that happens it asks for the my test value which gets the value as my test value which is from the app settings.json now you can use the application configuration just like before and use it to configure the services inside this method now if i continue the execution you will see that the application starts up successfully and it launches the weather forecast controller so which we can execute let's say try it out and execute and it returns the values as expected now all we have done is slightly move around the code a bit and we now have the startup.cs class in our dotnet 6 project as well now having this class is up to you and also based on your team's preferences if you want to keep all your services nice and tidy in one class you can do this and use it from your program.cs it also minimizes the amount of code that you would have in the program.cs class now all this change of the missing startup class was because of this web application dot create builder which is the new hosting model now if you want to learn more about this hosting model do let me know in the comments below looks like the startup.cs class wasn't missing after all it was just hidden in plain sight once we moved around the code a bit we were able to discover it again many of my videos in the asp.net series is made using the .net 3.1 which means you will still be finding the startup.cs class however now we understand that nothing much has changed between that and the .net 6 version so i hope this helps you to follow along the videos easier and also understand where the startup.cs class is and also how to migrate to it when moving from .net 3.1 apps if you like this video please make sure to hit the like button if you want to be notified of future such videos please hit the subscribe button it also helps me to grow this youtube channel thank you and see you soon